What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and I'm back kind of with a talking head about some stuff being launched at CES 2021. Which again, I said it before and I'll say it again, this doesn't really feel like CES, but I digress. We're gonna talk about the RTX 3060 today. Not the 3060 Ti, the 3060. The all-new Pure Loop liquid all-in-one water cooling unit features a doubly decoupled inline water pump for reduced vibration and noise, while the Pure Wings 2 fans provide ultra-silent operation. Available in multiple radiator sizes, the Pure Loop is the price-conscious choice for your next build. To learn more, click the Be Quiet link below. So, precariously, precariously? Whatever. Ironically, just, it wasn't a real NVIDIA keynote. There were no spatulas involved, or leather jackets, or rich mahogany, or overdone kitchens. But what we do have here is a new flagship in terms of the affordable model of NVIDIA's lineup of graphics cards. The 60 series cards has always been the most center mass targeted graphics card aimed at giving you the most performance for the most value. And although they do in the past have 50 models and 50 TI models, the 60 model, not the TI or the Super, is just the plain 60 has always been the go-to in terms of just the most for your money. Uh, the 1060, a Pascal card, being NVIDIA's all-time most popular graphics card they've ever made in terms of sales. So the 3060's design really targeted towards those folks that are still floating around on Pascal uh, to consider that it's time to upgrade. Not so much those that are maybe running a, a 2060, because uh, the upgrade from, obviously, Turing architecture to Ampere architecture is, is great, but the jump from Pascal to Ampere is like we've seen kind of through the product stack from the 80 series down is just a really good jump given the uh, actual price reduction we're seeing. Reduction, yes, I'm well aware of what I just said. We speak in MSRP because that's the way that the manufacturers advertise it. What the retailers do is an entirely different story, a story of uh, sadness and despair, but I digress. Again, there's actually a price reduction this time. So the 60 series model in the 1060 launched at uh, $299 for the founders and $249 for the MSRP. Now those are the basic cards, like the ones that we brought up before that have like a single fan and only have like a single six pin header and whatnot. Um, when we moved to the 2060 though, the 20 series card is what gave people a, a bad taste because we saw with Touring a massive jump in pricing across the board, where the 2060 was coming in at about $349. I mean, we're talking a $100 jump over MSRP at the same tier. Now, whether or not people bought into it at the time when 20 series first launched, we had the introduction of the RT cores. We had the introduction of the Tensor cores, you know, DLSS. Those cores not having a whole lot to do back then or actually doing quite a bit today with DLSS being available in many new titles. We're seeing the RTX 3060 launch launch at an MSRP of $329. So we're seeing a $20 reduction and a very strong generational bump in performance over the 2060. Now let's talk about the specs here. We're gonna compare it to the RTX 3060 Ti. And the reason why I'm doing that is because usually we would see NVIDIA launch the non-TI models first, and then the TI model later kind of splitting the distance between the 60 and the 70 series card. Although this time, I think because of the uh, threat of what AMD's Radeon team has been able to do, um, with RDNA 2.0, RDNA 2, uh, I think that they were kind of preemptively just sort of starting at the top and working their way down, including the TI model in between the, the 70 and the 60. But we've got 3,580 CUDA cores, or 84 CUDA cores, versus the RTX 2060's 1920. Now, one of the reasons that we're seeing that, and I feel like there's an asterisk that's probably necessary here, is if the architecture, and, and remember, this is there was a lot of high-level information here. There's still some gaps we don't have full-on information on yet that we haven't had our, our press day. I'm, this is the same information that the public saw. Um, we didn't have early access information like we often would get. I think with everything going on with NVIDIA lately and the battle between NVIDIA and content creators with them trying to silence uh, unboxed hardware or hardware unboxed, um, I think right now they just kind of like kept this to themselves, which is probably the right move. They um, haven't told us a whole lot about the architecture, but if it's, if it's similar to the core architecture we've seen with like 3080, 3090, 3070, there's almost like a hyper-threading kind of an aspect to the way the CUDA cores work. It's not actually hyper-threading, but it's sort of similar-ish in a way, where it makes the core counts quite high, but uh, it's also kind of a split workload. So it's one thing to keep in mind, I don't know if this is 3,584 physical CUDA cores, 
versus uh, you know the previous gen, uh, or whether or not they are um, simulated cores and or just effective logical cores. The ROPs guessing at 64, whereas 48 on the 2060 and 80 on the 3060 Ti. Oh, I forgot to mention there's 4,864 CUDA cores on the 3060 Ti. So you can see how previous gen 1920 versus 3584 and 4864 is going to be a jump in pretty much any title that utilizes uh, CUDA, obviously. But the boost clock, it's actually a higher boost clock on the 3060 at 1.78 gigahertz versus 1.6 gigahertz on the 3060 Ti. 14 gigabit per second on uh, GDDR6 on the 3060 Ti. We don't know what it's gonna be on 3060. We're guessing maybe 14. It's 192 bit memory bus versus 256 on the 3060 Ti. So this is where you start to see where some of the cost was saved and where some of the changes were made in the architecture is specifically with the memory bus. Curiously enough though, the 3060 Ti has eight gigabytes of GDDR6, whereas there are 12 gigabytes on the 3060. And I think that's more of a marketing thing because there's no way you're gonna be able to push the types of resolution that you would need 12 gigabytes for with the power that you typically get in a 60 series card, AKA 4K or you know, 8K is not gonna happen on a 60 series card period, not in probably the next five years even. But 12 gigabytes makes a really good marketing number because of the fact that Radeon has been known to put 16 gigabytes in all their cards so far, like or that we've seen with RDNA too. And if they start to keep that trend alive with their lower series cards, they're gonna have to have a higher memory count uh, or VRAM count with their lower series cards for NVIDIA just to seem competitive. Although it's kind of an arbitrary number in that if you can't fill the memory buffer and refresh it fast enough for the amount of performance that you're getting anyway, having all that extra memory really doesn't do anything for you in terms of gaming. But it could potentially give you some available workload for professional workloads and stuff where you need more than the eight gigabytes you're gonna find on the 3060 Ti. But I digress a third time in this video in that I think most people looking for workstation cards are not gonna be shopping for a 3060 to begin with. It might even be more prudent to find yourself an older, higher series card that has better CUDA performance and floating, port, floating point performance than something you'd find on like a 60 series card. It is a 170 watt part though. That's actually up 10 watts from last gen. Last gen was 160. 60 watts, now we're up to 170. A nominal 10 watt improvement over previous generation doesn't seem bad considering the fact that we know we're getting a fairly significant bump in performance. I think that's a trade-off that's worth it. One thing worth noting though, this is GA106 core. So unlike the 3060 Ti, where it was GA104, which is a shaved down 3070, it, in fact, even the PCB on the 3060 Ti is identical to a 3070, this is a completely different GPU. This is the first GPU in its more entry-level mid-range lineup from NVIDIA, then continuing the trend of shaved down uh, architectures. Whereas the 3080 and the 3090 are the same core, 3080 is very shaved versus 3090, 3070, 3060 Ti are the identical core, identical PCB, 3060 is the first of a new PCB. So we could expect a 3050 Ti maybe, or a 3050 to be a shaved version of GA106, which isn't terrible. They are all running eight nanometer Samsung. There are those rumors though of, of, of NVIDIA potentially moving architecture back to TSMC. Uh, potentially being a seven nanometer. And now we don't know yet what's happening with that. Everything, as you might expect, is completely upside down. And it's so interesting to see, uh, you know, with, with demand not being able to be met, because let's, this, is a, this is a multiple pronged pitchfork in what's happening with the industry right now. Demand is higher than it's ever been. Um, manufacturing is going as fast as it's ever gone but it's not enough because so many people right now are trying to buy and build and upgrade computers at the same time. It definitely looks like these companies are not coming out with product. However, the story they tell is that they're manufacturing it physically as fast as they can. However, demand is absolutely unprecedented. But availability is looking to be February of 2021. I got a little bit of an update here too to talk about with NVIDIA's availability with graphics cards because one of the things that both NVIDIA and AMD did do at CES was publicly address the concerns about supply and demand, which is something NVIDIA has been very quiet about. In fact, NVIDIA has been very adamant that they've been meeting demand, that they've been manufacturing more cards than they've ever had at any launch ever. And, and, and I think it's hard for people to swallow that pill whether it's the truth or not, I think people don't believe it because you can't just go online and buy one. So therefore people like to just assume that there, there was never any cards available. NVIDIA states that they have manufactured more cards this generation than last generation by as much as double 
and it's not been enough to meet the demand. I think there's more than twice the demand there was last year. However, they do say they expect the thin allocation to maintain through Q1 of 2021, not Q1 of the calendar, Q1 of their fiscal year, which actually goes through April. So you could probably expect four more months before things start to seem like they're normalizing. And another aspect of what's causing price to go up and availability to stay low is the fact that Bitcoin is about as high as it's ever been. And that alone is also making people start to mine once again. The mining craze was what caused us our initial just disaster for graphics card availability back in 2015, 2016. And now that we're seeing like the second major wave of Bitcoin craze, you can expect this to probably continue. So this was an information, informational piece to kind of give you some stuff of what to expect with 3060. Generational improvement over the 2060, absolutely hands down. I saw some stuff online of, of some other content creators actually being somewhat disappointed with this, saying it was pointless. I don't agree with that whatsoever. If, if you were able to get what they're showing here on paper for $20 less than what you got for the same price last year, that's a win if you can actually get it. And with all those things I just said happening in the world right now, I think you have a better chance of winning the lottery of getting a 30 series card. And then they're also launching 30 series on notebooks, which we plan on talking about and getting our hands on as well, because that's the next thing we've all seen the uh, allocation of the 30 series silicon has to go somewhere and laptops is another one of them. So anyway, there you go guys, the RTX 3060. Are you interested in buying it? Does it incentivize you to want to get it? Or are you gonna wait and see what sort of mid-range card AMD has? AMD had its keynote and we kind of hope to see and learn some stuff about maybe mid-range AMD RDNA 2 cards. Unfortunately, no, it was nothing more than uh, white noise to fall asleep to during that keynote because it was probably one of the most boring things I think any of us have ever watched. Are you gonna wait for AMD's mid-range card or are you going to try and get your hands on an RTX 3060 come February? Sound off in the comments below and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.